Chapter 10 Retracing and resurveying sectionalized lands. We're going to go back to and talk about the USPLS. Uh, last chapter, uh, we, went, uh, we spoke about um, littoral and riparian rights, right? Littoral boundaries and um, riparian boundaries and its associated rights. Introduction, page 281, top paragraph. Yet the retracing of these once created boundaries also requires a second unique type of person um, who probably should be more attuned to the law of evidence than being the, a technology freak, meaning that the original surveyor he had to work within the time, the time frame that he was with, his, with the laws and the instructions that he was given and the equipment he had at that time. Now the retracing surveyor has better technology but he also is um, equipped with uh, a better understanding of the law of evidence. From the beginning, it should be understood in, pra in the practice of land surveying that a resurvey and a retracement are not synonymous. Okay, resurvey is doing the entire survey from you know um, because of the errors associated with it. Uh, probably the court have decided to do a resurvey. A retracement is walking in the footsteps of the original surveyor, so they are not syn uh, same thing, same meaning. Retracements require people of different capabilities and possibly specialized knowledge and training. Last paragraph. No, second paragraph. Last sentence. The majority of the modern surveyors work, except for certain local subdivisions, is to find the land to be surveyed as retracements by finding the evidence of the original footsteps by the original surveyor. Last paragraph last sentence we will concentrate on the rules and the method that should be used to find those original boundaries with the emphasis on the GLO boundaries the general land office boundaries but referencing the meets and bound um, boundaries as well you know the meets and bound um, states the 13 states uh, referencing them as well section 10.2 but before we go to 10.2, on page 282 and uh, 283, it covers all of the principles that we will be covering in this chapter. And uh, uh, it's a lot of principles covered in this chapter 10. So, some from 282 till 286, there are 24 principles covered. We will cover a large majority of them all right and now we're in on page 286 section 10.2 areas of authority principle one an original survey creates original boundaries by an original surveyor as well as the evidence of these boundaries the evidence of them where the monuments are bearing trees etc this created evidence and also on the subsequent written record became the footsteps to be followed by your retracing surveyor. Page 287, top paragraph. The ultimate authority in a resurvey of public lands in, is the BLM, Bureau of Land Management, public lands only not private technically and legally no private uh, registered surveyor may conduct a resurvey of a parcel that is described in reference to federal surveys so private surveyors technically cannot do uh, uh, retracements or, or resurvey of federally owned land by an adequate parcel description surveyors have, have authority only to conduct retracement of the federal lands which in which in uh, and of themselves are binding on no landowner or other surveyor whereas a retracement should be considered nothing more than an opinion of the corners and the lines based on the evidence of the original survey that was recovered 
This can include tangible evidence as well as the measurements, uh, and both original and also subsequent. And it'll, but there's a number of evidence that we'll be talking about later on. <laughs> Next paragraph: The Bureau of Land Management is the only agency that Congress has authorized to conduct original surveys of the public domain land and is also authorized to promulgate rules and regulations to put into effect the land laws of the United States. These rules and guidelines are, apply only to the agency that created the rules, not to other organizations or societies. This agency issued various manuals and pamphlets. One of them available online is Restoration of Lost and Obliterated Corners. The pamphlet summarizes the finding of federal courts on how to make resurveys or retracements and how to divide protracted portions of sections, protracted done in the office, and how to um, divide them out in the field. As noted, the pamphlet summarizes federal court findings as well, but not those of all state courts, only federal courts. No state legislature can enact survey laws for retracing or re-establishing of public land survey corners or lines that are in conflict with the federal law. So no state agency have jurisdiction in federal areas which originally was surveyed or created. <coughs> Principle two. In any retracement, page two eighty seven whether by a federal agency or a private survey, the description contained in the patent of the original boundaries is the controlling description. The retracing survey should use to place the original boundaries on the ground. So whatever is on the original patent, retracing survey need to identify, take the information and identify where the boundaries, original boundaries are on the ground. Section 10.3, resurvey and retracement. A resurvey, top paragraph at the bottom of the page, a uh, resurvey is a reconstruction of the land boundaries and subdivision accomplished by rerunning re and remarking the lines represented in the field note record as on record or on the plot of a previous official survey. It's again, walking in the footsteps of the original survey. Page 288. Top paragraph. The field note record of the resurvey includes a description of the technical manner in which the resurvey was done. Full reference to, to recover evidence of the previous survey or surveys and complete description of the work performed and monuments established. So all of that based upon the uh, what was what the record has indicated when, by the original survey need to be established and uh, in terms of looking for evidence. Next paragraph, as discussed in the earlier chapter, an original survey creates the boundaries, and without an original survey, there are no boundaries. But once the boundaries are created, no lesser agency has the authority to modify or alter the original boundaries other than the agency that created them. So no, once those boundaries are created, there is no one who can alter them unless the agency who had created them. And that the agency has no authority to change these boundaries if, again, now if people have been living on the tracks of land for a long period of our, um, years that has given them bona fide rights granted previously are in any way impinge upon. Next paragraph. Middle of the paragraph. Perhaps the best definition would be to consider a retracement as merely an investigation survey to determine where the original lines were and the corners are set and the evidence associated with them. In a retracement, the survey attempts to recover as much as possible the original survey. Evidence is important in order to prove types of surveys and resurveys. Section 10.4, page 289. The original survey creates
um, evidence and leaves this evidence behind for subsequent survey. On page 289, the second paragraph from the top. Probably the best definition for retracement can be found in Florida's case, Rivers versus uh, Lazua, where the court has wrote in its decisions. A surveyor is a surveyor can ret retain or, or to, can a surveyor can be retained to locate on the ground a boundary line which was therefore being established there two after four there two four being established. When it does this, he traces the footsteps of the original survey in locating evidence of the boundaries. Correctly stated, this is the retracement survey, not a resurvey. Or it's a retracement survey and in performing this function the second and each succeeding survey is a follow or tracing survey and its sole duty function and power is to locate the ground on the ground the boundaries corners and boundary line or lines established by the original survey he cannot establish a new corner if it's a new corner then he is doing a, a new survey original survey Known can he correct the errors of the original survey. The monument's boundary is where it is. He must only tack, track the footsteps of the original survey. Uh, the following the survey rather than being the creator of the boundary line is, it, is only its discoverer and when he correctly locates it. So it's important that you understand that the, um, the when you do a re, uh, retracement it involves only investigation into the evidence of from the field original field notes to identify where the boundary is a dependent survey page 289 uh, second paragraph from the bottom. A dependent survey is, the first, is first a retracement of all recoverable evidence of the original corners and lines and then the re-establishment of lost or obliterated corners and lines in accordance with the proper rules and then in accordance with the best available evidence and applicable rules of the survey. So that survey is actually dependent upon previous surveys. An independent survey it, it cast aside the original survey or does not use the original survey and all of its boundary lines and creates all new monuments and corners and may include the establishment of new township line without reference to the original survey and usually this is the case where the courts would decide uh, if the independent survey is required. Uh, in the middle of that paragraph uh, sorry, page 290. Uh, second paragraph. In theory, from the top. In theory, once an independence resurvey is approved, the original survey no longer exists, even though the monumental original survey may still exist out in the field. The landmark retracement case, there's a case, uh, Craig over versus Powell, contains reference to a letter from the Commissioner of General Office, which reads as follows. Um, the making of resurveys or corrective surveys of townships once proclaimed for sale is always at the hazard of interfering with private rights and thereby introducing new complication. And it says here, where I uh, show in the slide, a resurvey proper, properly considered is but a retracement with a view to determine the unestablished lines and bounds of original survey. And it continues more. 10.5, section 10.5, Court of Proper Jurisdiction. Page 290. Principle three, when retracing or dividing sections of land created under federal laws, federal rules, of the survey must be followed one when the final adjudication of the problems is tried in federal court 
so if the property is still being owned by the federal government then it will be um, following the uh, laws of the f federal laws and um, there are rules that they would follow in terms of doing any retracement of those federal lands and two or or two when a state has accepted or adopted the federal rules and when the original patents were federal in nature this is when it's a, a, the rules retracement will follow those federal laws and federal rules next paragraph a survey retracing a federally created township is bound to follow the federal rules because that was how, that was how it was done at that time by, by the um, general land office that created the township if proper if property rights are created under one set of serving rules it hardly seems reasonable that is next paragraph once land passes from the federal government to private parties within a state the jurisdiction has changed the jurisdiction over the court trial passes from the federal court to the state court so once you deal with private property that was originally federal land then uh, any conflicts will be held um, will be addressed in the state courts federal patents ten, page 291 section 10.6 federal patent is a legal means by which the federal government grants land from federal ownerships into private ownership a patent carries no warranty of title or any other warranties so for all practical and legal purposes it may be equated to a quit claim deed okay so a federal patent is also referred to as a quit claim deed a patent from the federal government is senior in all rights however wrong it would be incorrect in terms of the description it is has senior rights except prior granting rights by some previously authorized ent entity the senior patent will take control section 10.7 intent of the government in law the actual proven intentions of the parties to a land transaction are paramount to other considerations senior rights expected they are junior senior rights yes but prior to that if there are lack of evidence then the judge is going to decide what was the original intent of the grantor and the grantee for the grantor uh, to be selling off the land to the grantee has to see what is the, the original intent because official government aid subdivisions were conducted and made under the stat under the statutes in effect at the time of the surveys and because it is presumed that the instructions rules and regulations by the general land officers were obeyed it's presumed okay any intent on the part of the government must be interpreted from the statutes rules and regulations in effect as of the date of the patent so unless proven otherwise it is presumed that everything everyone all of the um, the field work was done according to the rules by federal statute the boundary lines actually run and run and marked in the surveys returned by the surveyor generally should be established as the proper boundary lines if they are wrong it's already done for which they were intended those represent the boundaries of the subdivision for which they were intended thus the original lines as run by the original surveys are the best indication of the intent so if you can prove that the lines are there that was it's proof that it, the intent is there it becomes axiomatic that uh, because the retracing, retracement depends on the original surveys described by the plots and the field notes. The surveyor who undertakes any retracement must base the retracement survey on the original notes. That is indicative of the intent and the plots by which the description was created. So very important. Senior rights 10.8 section 10.8. Federal law never made provisions for federal government to convey prior land rights that were not obtained 
So, um, it did not have any provisions for senior rights. Federal government owned the entire land. Federal land system was one of the few systems providing for recognition of valid land rights that, are, that were um, granted in areas of public domain prior to the American Revolution. Um, page 292, uh, second paragraph from the top. When a surveyor is asked to retrace that either township with its sections or prior senior grant, the surveyor must examine the date of the respective survey. Uh, to determine which is senior or junior as well as the date of the grant. So all of these are ways of collecting evidence. Page 292 now. Uh, in the block, gray box, it is presumed that when the land grant is superimposed within a township, it is a senior in title. The land grant will be senior in title on the townships but it may be junior in the survey of defining the line. So the land grant could be have be, could be a junior right from a bigger grant that was issued early on. So it all depends on the context and the time, or time and date of the, the grant. Section 10.9, following the footsteps of the original survey. Top paragraph, middle sentence, if one were to follow the dictum uh, to the letter of the law, it would mean that the retracing survey should first run the section lines with the compass, or better yet, before all of that, run the township lines, compass or solar compass or solar transit and then use a two pole chain or five pole chain ribbon tape to conduct the initial retracement. So that will be following the footstep or following based upon the letter of the law. Following the footstep simply means following the evidence. All right. No one, no one can walk in the exact footsteps of the original survey. Rather, it becomes a matter of tacking the footsteps, tracking the, the footsteps by the evidence that is recovered and then being able to say that the general degree of certainty where the boundaries are. Uh, next paragraph. The retracing survey should attempt to recover totality of the evidence, all of the evidence of the original survey, and then determine where the survey stood and be able to identify exactly in order to identify where he actually um, surveyed. Section 1010, page 293, principle 4. Provided that a superior right is not interf interfered with or fraud committed, which uh, later on you'll find out there was quite a bit of fraud during that time, the boundaries of public lands, when approved, accepted, and patented, are unchangeable and uh, un unassailable by individuals or by the court. So once it's done, once everything is done, at that time it is set in stone. Next paragraph, the burden of proof is now placed on the retracement survey to locate the lines as they were actually placed on the ground, not where they should have been. So there's no correction of it. The resurvey becomes a question of evidence, collection of evidence, and the ability to convince the judge or the jury that the evidence presented is superior to all of the evidence. Original Corners, page 293, print, uh, principle four, again. Uh, provided a superior right, they have repeated themselves here in the two, these two principles, but applicable in the original corners as well. Um, 
original corners the same sort of principle applied uh, assuming that everything that did, did well went, did go as planned and as followed instructions etc then the original corner should you should be able to find all of the evidence associated with the original corner last paragraph middle sentence a federal township plat does not become effective until it's signed by the Soviet general principle five uh, original township section and quarter section corners stand as true corners that they were intended to represent regardless of where they were located it is not this is not true of closing corners closing corners are corners that close off on the township line okay original field notes and plats section 10.12 Principle six, the plats and all original field notes become a part of the grant or patent. When conducting a retracement, the survey should consult available, consult available and known plats and notes and use all of that as documentation to do its retracement. Find as many, as much evidence as possible to prove the corners and the boundaries. Last paragraph, government field notes are a major source from which the descriptive information concerning corners, monuments, accessories, accessories are for example bearing trees that uh, are used to witness the corners and line information can be found on these, or on these field notes. The best evidence of how and where the lines will run appears in, in the notes. If there is a discrepancy of the measurement between the plat and the field notes, the plat usually must give way of the field notes. So the field notes come first, then the plat. And the land department may properly correct the plat so as to conform with the field notes. However, if the description affects the description, closing corners. Uh, before we go there, um, page 295, you see an example. Uh, figure 10.1 a portion of township in mississippi and how it was um, surveyed into the various fields and the documentation or field notes uh, as shown in the diagram closing corners page 296 section 10.13 principle 7 closing corners that are not actually located on the line that are closed upon will determine the direction of the closing line but not its legal terminus the true position is the point of intersection of the two lines where the se um, section lines intersect with the township line that indicates the closing corners next paragraph the su a surveyor who is asked to retrace the lines of those sections that border the range lines or the township lines will encounter closing errors so you want to know what are closing closing corners closing corners are those corners that are on that does not close to where it's supposed to have been in the township and range lines it should be understood that closing corner even though it, it is a corner it should not be considered as having the same dignity as that of the section corner section cor section corner are high priority than your closing corner because these corners were set up after the original township and range were created the closing corner is important but not absolutely controlling next paragraph once a line is run and established it cannot be altered at a later date if the surveyor failed to place the closing corner on the true line close upon the original line cannot be changed to fit the new corner the closing corner must be moved to the, to the line closed upon. This rule applies to closing corners on standard parallels, correction lines, lines, land grants, and also last set of double corners as well. So closing, closing corners do have its list of priorities in terms of its relevance and its weighting, uh, weight assigned to it identification of corners and lines page 296 section 10.14 a, a retracement requires the services of a person who understands evidence and also how to collect evidence the significance of it and its legal implication evidence of original surveys and their significance and how this evidence related to the original me measurements as well as 
to modern measurements and not to technical aspects of the modern survey. So it's, in a nutshell, it's what the uh, licensed land survey does. Page 297. The paragraph, a survey will appreciate that evidence can consist of verbal and real evidence. And they are all prioritized in terms of weights attached to them, as well as hearsay evidence. Okay, even though it's lower down the list, but hearsay evidence can contribute to it. All are equally important in determining where the original footsteps were left. Page 297, section 10.15, monuments and then identification. Principle 8. After making allowances for natural changes, a monument to, to be identifiable as an original monument should not differ greatly from the original notes. It should not be a big difference. All surveyors should realize that monuments set on the corner points are like people. Time affects each differently and it's in, in its own way. And these monuments can vary in terms of one, the character, the dimensions of the monument and the, the evidence should not be widely different from what is on record. The markings also is evidence. It should not be inconsistent with what is on record. And three, the nature of the accessories, the bearing trees in the evidence should be consistent with what's on record, including the size of the trees, the position, markings and scribings should not be greatly at variance with the record. Next paragraph, a variety of monuments have been used throughout the years. They use posts, stones, stone mounds, dirt mounds, but also with pits also were most frequently used when undisturbed stones or stone mounds last for decades. And on occasion, portions of the wooden posts have been uncovered after a hundred years more or more. Next paragraph, the type of monument found must correspond to the size, species, and general character. To what? To that call for in the, or in the field notes. Deviations from the call for information make the acceptance of the location difficult and suspicious. In one area, the original survey called for wooden posts. However, today each corner recovered is monumented by a marble post of unknown origin. Page 298. Top paragraph. Each stone in a mound is removed and examined to determine the nature of the ground under it and presence of undecayed leaves. A change in coloration of the ground level indicates the aging. So when you're looking for evidence out there, you have to be very, very critical and observant and take your time. <coughs> Next paragraph, the ferilities of creating this of the creating survey became important. Did the creating survey estimate the size of the stone or did he measure it? Did the creating survey read the wrong end of the compass? Did the creating survey measure to the bearing tree or uh, did it a guesstimate? So those are all questions that could come in in court if you are uh, called in court to give evidence. And those are the, area, those are the questions you need to investigate and uh, look for answers and evidence and collect them accordingly. Next paragraph, accessories such as bearing trees, uh, call for in the writings in the, in the, on record, have equal dignity with the corner itself. So just as good as, as finding the corner if the bearing trees uh, matches up. Blazed bearing trees can be traced back to the time of the original survey by counting the tree rings in terms of overgrowth. If you can create a borehole, you can one of the tools that we have. To, count, um, to extract the number of rings, we can count how old a tree is. Bearing trees were usually scribed on the sides of the trees with the uh, corner location, township, range, section number. And the scribing should be consistent with what is on the field notes and standard instructions at that time. Section 10.16, evidence of corners, principle nine. When there is acceptable evidence indicating the location of an original corner, 
the corner should be considered as obliterated and should not be relocated from relocated from the evidence so when there's acceptable evidence even though it might not be there the corner but there are any thread of evidence then that point is obliterated next paragraph a surveyor should never hesitate to consider every form or type of evidence to locate a corner monument because a corner is a controlling point for a line and courts and surveyors should understand that no form of evidence should be cast away because those are the thread of evidence going to prove that point that could help to locate the original position courts consider lost corner as serious problems and they look for shred of any acceptable evidence that may be utilized to have to raise the dignity of that lost corner or to more of a obliterated corner. An obliterated corner is what we thrive to maintain if the corner is not there. Page 299, top paragraph. Courts look at the, look, courts look at the standard of evidence needed to accept corners quite differently than those than than does the survey and particularly the BLM whereas the BLM once required that a degree of proof can be on a reasonable doubt that has changed uh, now which is the most stringent the court as well as a new edition of the BLM manual now require only so from a beyond a reasonable doubt they're saying that the BLM manual now only requires a preponderance of evidence and these are phrases you want to know use of testimony in bog in boundaries section 10.17 principle 10 the original location of a corner may be identified by the evidence as well as by testimony of a witness who saw that corner over the years it is an exception to the hearsay rule. Hearsay is, for example, I somebody might come. Up, I remember my grandfather said that he saw where the survey put it. That's a hearsay. Grandfather has passed on. It's low. It's it still is evidence, but it's um you know, it lose some of its credibility. But the evidence as well as the testimony must be evaluated as having to meet the preponderance of evidence criterion and not beyond a reasonable doubt criterion courts next paragraph and the manual accept the testimony of eyewitnesses to the original corners can be critical in determining location of original corners yet they may accept the fact that some people have selective memory or selective recall of facts and that's unfortunate last paragraph in that section um, second paragraph from the bottom when a surveyor receives testimony while in the field he, he or she should consider the applicability of the field related testimony to future use several states permit surveys to take votes for the establishment of old corners and recognize lines so taking testimony out in the field is just as good collecting evidence more evidence to prove those boundaries and corners is 300 to be useful top, um, to be useful top paragraph statements made under oath must contain facts that are that a personal knowledge of the person given the testimony statements of facts about that what a person was told by third parties is considered hearsay and you want to make sure that that is explicit in your collection of evidence um or double say hearsay something that you know the more you hear from uh, the information transfer from one person to the other which is not good but if that's what you have a witness can testify that he or she personally observed a corner being destroyed when the county road was widened or oh, and he or she can point out to the survey the location of the monument as he or she remembers it but he or she cannot testify where the neighbor said it was located. Next paragraph. A surveyor should place little reliance on testimony of people who are involved in the land dispute. Because obviously they're going to swear they the, the, the decision towards their benefit if there's a dispute between adjoiners. 
or on a statement about boundaries or corners that were originated after the dispute began. Next paragraph. Last paragraph in that section. The testimony of individual may relate to the original monument or the, the accessories, the bearing trees, the line trees, etc. prior to the destruction or to any other mark, marks fixing the locus of the original survey. All right, this concludes the first half of this chapter 10. Please review the material and we will continue with the next uh, uh, section of that chapter 10 in the next class.